Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's meeting. And uh, we're gonna go over just a few items, including the first date that we have set. Probably wait till she gets in here to go over that part. Oh, well, okay. at the very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah at the very okay. end. Uh, going over the date, meal plan, uh, workouts and so forth. Uh, we just got done filming the workouts, so I'll be getting those loaded and added into the app uh, for the sprinters, jumpers, and then also for the throwers. Uh, he does state on here, um, we had a, um, a sprinter jumper practice um, at an indoor track um, because the first meet is coming up February 18th, so we wanted to test all of our um, numbers before that meet at Spires. Anyway, so we were there testing and not realizing how long it's been since uh, some of us have sprinted, been injured, whatever, and it was some of the best times ever. And I haven't sprinted since, especially the 60. I did some hundreds in the summer um, and hit better times than ever. So he's like, wow, once you start to get a level of muscle memory in the body, um, even taken off, three, four, five months, um, that memory is in there, especially with all the little details that he teaches from uh, all of us. It was a massive turnout, um, some of the best speeds ever, um, best jumps ever, like really great jumps. Rhonda had some of her best jumps, and she was coming off of a three to four month Achilles injury. Um, so he says in the practice on the video, that you don't need to be obsessive about constantly practicing um, because the muscle memory is in there. And that muscle memory, when you don't take a year off uh, and you're doing just little things. So a lot of the workouts, he's got a lot of different things that happen in the workout that are, you know, just like the movement that is a throwing movement. Um, or um, things that we're doing with the hands when we're doing stuff or keeping the toes really flexible. All those little tiny things can just incorporate in your everyday life. Um, and they all add up and they show up when it's time to perform. So it's not this all or nothing. I've got to just obsessively do all this activity and this and all these workouts or I have no time to do anything, so now I feel like I'm going to fail and I'm not going to be able to compete or whatever. That's not the case at all, especially with Masters Athletics. Masters Athletics um, got a lot of muscle memory already. Um, we put in a lot of work in that initial preseason that we did last winter was our preseason. Then we went into the first part of the season. Then we went into the summer season, and now we're into um, – really like the third season now this is like season three uh so and everyone's just form looked incredible takeoffs jumps the steps Rhonda gave me some good tips even on uh, the high jump that I just kept trying to get a number and she's like just skip that number and don't tell them it worked it worked it was beautiful so <laughs> all these little things and like Brittany and uh, Rachel working on the blocks and so forth. So all these little details, that's just know that we don't have to put in so much obsessive focus like we did all the way um, from last winter till this summer um, now. And he's worked on so many little details. Now, if you've got to heal something, you can work around it or so forth. Just the little things that happen in the workouts in the practices that we film, in a live practice. Um, even, you know, if someone can't make a practice, I'll just train you when I do you in a one-on-one. -on -one. I can do those items on you in the one-on-one -on -one session so you really don't miss those at all. So, um, and that's really what he was talking about when I was filming him uh, do the practices yesterday. So, um, I'll be loading the practices this week so they'll get loaded in there. And um, you'll have those to actually start working on and just incorporating those. Um, at any moment in time, like uh, I've told different um, athletes, like when all I have is 10 or 15 minutes, I'm like, well, I'm just going to do the two moves from the workout, whether it was put a bar behind my head and just do, you know, stomp where I land on my um, 
follow my foot or I'm going to just do the trunk rotations, throw the trunk rotations in a couple rounds of those. Uh, don't think it has to just be like this solid workout. That's my track workout. Little tiny things add up no matter what. They 100%. It's just like saving 10%, 10%, 10% compound the interest. The shit racks up. It's the same thing with this. We feel, all of us feel really secure that I can actually start to compete again because we got so many details in you guys. I had to watch over so much, make sure every single detail was um, focused on. Um, him and I really couldn't compete at all this whole past year. We had to just like make sure all the little ducks are actually able to start to be more self-sufficient and turnkey. And that's what we feel now. We definitely feel it with powerlifting. So it just feels so easy with powerlifting. Well, that's how track's starting to feel now, which feels great. Um, so we can actually, you know, get some of our competition back in. Meal plan 50 is the meal plan that I loaded for, uh, we loaded that for January. It is a very, very, very strict keto plan. It is for dropping body fat. Um, throwers cannot have trunk fat. Um, it is a no-no. So it's the number one spot you've got to take that body fat off of. Um, so that's why keto is imperative um, for throwers. Obviously, um, body fat um, doesn't work well with jumping. High jump, especially long jump and pole vault. The body fat has got to be down. Uh, pole vault, you definitely got to be down in some single digits, uh, you know, to the early. So between 9 and 11 to 12 percent, you do not want to pull up. 19%, 18%, 21% over a pole. No fucking way going flying in the air. So body fat throws off the mechanics of the body. Muscle does not throw off your body mechanics. Body fat does. You can see all my, um, what do you call it? I put all over. I was so sore. I couldn't even fall asleep Sunday. I was so sore. Uh, anyway, um, but body fat throws off your mechanics. It throws off trunk rotation. It throws off your body's capacity um, in a sprint in order to lean over and come back up easily. It throws that off. It gives a delay in your capacity to get back up upright when you're leaning over. Um, it fully throws off high jump and long jump, um, being able to get aerial, being able to soar. Um, that's all completely thrown off by body fat. So keto i'm going to explain that i'm going to give a really detailed explanation so those of you who think you understand keto um i'm still going to explain it deeper um most of the time the the masses definition of keto is like adkins and bullshit like that the type of keto that we're talking about that i've got in the, the meal plan is athletic keto um so when it comes to ketosis um, there's either glycolysis or ketosis, okay? So glyco, glycogen, glycogen carbs are all the same street. They're 71 north, okay? Notice how you cannot get from 71 north to 71 south. They go in opposing directions. Ketosis is keto, ketones. Um, which ketones come out of open fat cells. And that comes from fat. Okay. So when you eat in your mouth a carb, uh, I was explaining to Mike, carbs and fat are like on and off switches in the body. Okay. When one switch is on, the other one is off. If you turn this one off, this one will automatically have to turn on or you'll die. Okay. The body is conditioned. It's not what we were raised with, how we <clears throat> were formed and lived our lives for the last 300,000 to 1 million years. We lived in ketosis for all those years. We were not glycotic animals, beings. We were ketone, ketogenic animals, meaning we had to hunt for what we ate. So that means you were running chasing, stalking with no food. You're not eating when you're doing that. So you have an empty stomach. So that's fasting. Then you do the labor, the sprinting, the javelin throwing, the stabbing, the cutting, the lifting, 
like lifting weights, squatting, carrying all this weight on your back and get it back to base camp. So it was an extreme ketogenic way of life. So there was long periods of fast, hunting for meat and fat. Um, and there was no grains. There was no grains being eaten. Very rarely in season would they find some kind of berries or fruit. So the bodies, if you look, Aborigines, you look at all of them, they, all of them have six packs. So their bodies are fat adapted. So that's what this lesson is going to be about. Fat adapted means the light switches on, on burning body fat for fuel. Okay. We cannot burn carbs and body fat at the same time. The complete fucking lie. It's just marketing. It's bullshit. It sells um, bodybuilder products when people that are in the ads are on gear. They have to eat a ton of carbs and calories or since they're injecting gear, which is just steroids from another wild animal like a bull or a horse, that's that urine, which is what a steroid is in the body, is making the metabolism so fast, it'll eat their muscle off their bones. So that's why they cheat so much. They're such liars. It's such a disgusting um, marketing propaganda that they do. So they're the ones that pushed out into the marketplace that you could eat carbs and burn fat. Not possible whatsoever. Any form of gear is from another species injected into your body. It speeds up your heart, speeds up every single part of the body, and it will catabolize. It will eat your muscle down if you don't eat a ton of calories. So they feel like they got a leg up on other people when they can eat all these fucking carbs and still have a six pack. They can eat all this, all these massive amounts of calories and people are pretty much starving when they try to do stuff naturally. So you cannot have the light switch on for carbs and the light switch on for fat burning. They don't coexist. One switch turns off. So ketosis is the body has to um, empty out like a gas tank. It has to empty out all your carbs. Okay. So it's going down, 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 down. So when you're eating carbs, whatever those carbs are, I don't care what they are when you're eating them, the body in the blood has carbs floating around everywhere. Sugar, 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 sugar is all over the bloodstream. The body says, okay, let's make some glycogen with this. We'll put 250 calories in the liver. We'll put about 600 in the muscles. We'll put some up in the brain. All the rest is going to go in the fat that we don't need to use. Then every time you eat and you put a carb with your meal, body says, oh, we're total carb centric. All we do is burn carbs for fuel. And every time we get on the treadmill, we're just burning up carbs. And every time we run, we're just burning up carbs. Every time we do everything, it's just carbs. And... Carbs don't burn fat. Eating carbs do not burn fat at all. So if you lose weight, you're losing muscle a lot. You're losing water weight and you just look scrawny, but not built. And you're not as strong. Um, the brain has to think and it can only think on a form of glycogen, either from carbs or when ketones turn, when ketosis starts, a ketone is something that the brain can think off of. But in order to get to a ketone, the body has to open up the fat cell, get out, pull that out of there. And it says, oh, we can use this thing. That's what we can use. And then the brain can start thinking again. Um, when your body is carb adapted, it means all it does is burn carbs for fuel. That's it. Every single move that it makes, every action you take is just all carbs. There's no fat loss with that water loss. You have to cut your calories way, way, way back. Um, and you are a carb burner. Okay. Ketosis is when you turn off the switch completely. It's 100% turned off. No carbs are coming in that are going to trigger the light switch to be on. And you're forcing the fat cells to open and get the ketones out of it. And then the body says, now I can use this to think, to lift, to move, to just do everything I need to do, to burn fat. That's why carb eating doesn't make you hot, doesn't make you sweat. Keto, when you're in ketosis, you'll eat some hard-boiled eggs and some nuts or hard-boiled eggs and some um, bacon, and you'll just start perspiring. So, and you will notice this. If you haven't done it yet, it will happen the longer you stay on it.
So you're not sweating on carbs, but you're sweating on ketosis and ketones. So when one switch is off, the other switch is on. Both switches can't be off. Both switches can't be on. Both switches are off, you're dead. Oh, no, there's no way you can do that. Um, but both can't be on. So fat and the second. So if I was to overeat a big bowl of cereal or any any kind of high carb thing, I would immediately get out of ketosis. It'd be over. So it would, all that hard work I did to get into ketosis would be wiped out in one fucking wrong move. So that's how serious it is. Um, and then the body just snatches back onto the carbs and the body says, oh, good. We're back to the easy shit again. We don't have to do all that hard work to break down body fat. All right. Now we're going to make you crave carbs like a maniac. So that's why it's important to understand based on how you want to look and how you want to perform. Ketosis is the way that you should live your life. So for the most part, you're living your life that way. You want to become fat adapted. So um, getting into ketosis can happen after about four or five days. Um, you're going to have about four days of hell, feeling nauseated. I was nauseous as hell. And that nausea is because all that fat is coming in. The body's like, I'm not used to breaking all this fat down. This feels, you're making my stomach hurt. You're making me feel nauseated. That's good. You're moving in the right direction. Your body's burned up all the carbs. And now it's like, okay, you want us to actually start to use ketones. This is a nauseous process. We're just not used to it. Then after about, by day five, that goes away. And the body's actually starting to produce ketones from fat. So now you begin to just the baby level of turning the light switch on and you start to become, you're becoming fat adapted. So fat adapted means the body says, I want fat for fuel. Um, I'm not craving carbs anymore. And so until that moment happens where the cravings for carbs, you're not in ketosis yet. You are not fat adapted. Your body's just like, mm, I don't trust you. I think you're going to go back to those carbs. I'm going to keep tempting you. And you're just like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You're not getting any carb. I'm giving you more bacon, bitch. I'm giving you another burger. I'm giving you what you don't want to eat right now, some pork rinds or whatever. And then all of a sudden it just starts to go, I'm not hungry anymore. That means the body says, you got plenty of fat. So when appetite goes down in ketosis, you are eating. You are absolutely eating. You don't need to bring it in through your mouth. Your body is now opening up fat cells and taking out every single calorie that it needs. Every single calorie. Every single thing to think with. Every single thing to move muscle with. Um, burn body fat. Burn skin. You cannot burn skin with carbs either. Carbs bloat. Carbs inflame. Protein does the opposite. So on that plan... Those of you who are not really good at ketosis and uh, getting into ketosis, you need to use the Carb Manager app that's in the on your phone. Just download Carb Manager. If you're wondering about food, you key it into Carb Manager before you go to the restaurant and you see. Based on your weight, it's going to tell you how much carbs you can have. But the main thing is, is it is a fat dominant. So 70% fat, 25% protein. And you can never get these ratios off ever and five percent carb when i say the ratios the fat and the protein ratio cannot be mixed up ever um fat in the blood triggers ketosis protein in the blood can trigger glycogen so if you've got too much protein floating around the body says oh we're pretty good we don't know how to convert protein into carbs if we can convert that into glycogen so that's why the protein has to be way down at 25 percent, so high with the fat at 70 percent and then this is like, almost like, imagine like water and oil. So in the body, we have 70% water. Now we have all this fat floating in there. Fat's floating in the bloodstream. It's probably what makes us nauseated at first. And then the body starts going, oh, we see a lot of fat. Start grabbing it. Turn the light switch off the glycogen and the carbs. Turn it on to fat. Start burning fat for fuel. Start using up the body fat all day long. So you're eating tons of calories. Your body's eating tons of calories. You don't need to take it all in through your mouth. So that's the understanding I want you to have uh, about ketosis and why it's so important. So another thing about ketosis is the way that the body works. So let's just say like this is the side view of you. Okay. So this is you, the side view. Here's your stomach. Here's your ass on this side right here. The visceral fat is all what's in the trunk of you. So this is like a lot of visceral fat all right here in this center. Okay. So you got a bunch of visceral fat, which now makes you look like you, you have a bunch of belly fat. Your gut sticks out. I remember if I started to try to suck in my stomach, it would hurt like hell. 
hurt to suck in my stomach because I had so much visceral fat in here. When I tried to suck my fat on my stomach in, the visceral fat was just so big, it would hit the organ and hurt, hurt my diaphragm, hurt whatever. So when you get into ketosis, the body is going after this shit first, this really dangerous fat, which is your visceral fat. So you start to go like this more and more and more and more and more and more. So you start to get much smaller on your side profile view and look what happens to the subcutaneous fat. All the fat that was all the way out here, he starts coming in and in and in. It's coming closer and closer. And the more you have the ability to suck your waist in without feeling pain, the more you know you've eaten down so much of that dangerous visceral fat. So visceral fat gets very fatty and very disgusting and very dangerous. It gets in that core of our trunk because there's a lot of empty space in there. So we get a lot of fucking gross visceral fat in there. And that's what makes the body push out and push out. So as you start to come together, you start burning more and more visceral fat. You start coming this way. Keep looking side view, side view, side view. Like, wow. Okay, you'll see some subcutaneous fat still. But the most important part is the more this visceral fat comes down, then it'll start to go after that. That's cold fat. This is really hot fat right in here because it's right beside the muscles or the organs. So that's why this is first to go, which is good. We want that to be first to go. So that's what you need to imagine about ketosis. So any questions about something you want to go eat, you key it into the app ahead. You could key into the app all tomorrow's food. What's tomorrow going to look like? Where do I have to take some? So I was discussing with Jody. Those of you that don't have lactose allergies or dairy allergies, you still want to watch certain cheeses because cheap cheese has a lot of milk in it, a lot of lactose, which is going to make the carbs up too high. Your, your Swiss or your sharp cheddar has no carbs. Goat cheese has no carbs. So you want to choose your cheeses as often as possible. If you have a little bit of some of your favorite cheese if it has a little bit of lactose, but not a lot of that because that's sugar. That's lactose sugar. Um, so watch that. Um, so you absolutely should be dropping. You should be dropping really great amounts of weight and skin and everything should be melting as well. So there's no better way to drop skin and not have a bunch of fat left over on your chin or your pecs or your back fat or stomach fat than being fat adapted. So that's going to be the talk for the next 120 days minimum, fat adapted. Um, so minimum three months of doing it um, because after three months, we need to see what is your body doing and exactly what amount of carb would turn your light switch back on and ruin all your work. So we always stay below that amount of carbs. Um, and Todd's doing so much research on that. What kind of activity would burn those carbs off if you were to eat them? Um, so what, you know, is it a certain kind of cardio, is it a certain kind of weight training, the exact minutes, and that's going to go in his book. So you guys are kind of working with us on this first part of really strict keto. Those of you that are not on some other diet plan that he has you on, but, um, the rest of us are actually doing this. And then we'll get to the point where he knows exactly the quantity of minutes that are needed for every 25 to 50 grams of, of um, carbs that would come in to rip them right back out, out of your body. So it doesn't stop you being fat adapted and make you go back over to glycogen. So that's why this diet is a really important step right now. Very important step. Another thing to understand about sugar. Sugar is a drug. Fat and protein are not drugs. So it is addiction. It is addiction. It is addiction. It is addiction addicted to carbs. So it is a sugar addiction and it leads to death. Death of your dreams, death of your athletic skills, death of your motivation, death of your kidneys, death of your pancreas, death of everything. So it's a fucking drug and don't lighten it up at all. It's nothing to be, to be casual about. Um, okay. So went over that, went over the thing about throwers and trunk rotation, went over about jumpers. Jumpers have got to get to superior levels of body fat, um, not just on the Arbo scale. He's got to be able to test your body fat as well. You want to get to a superior body fat to just know that you don't have anything weighing you down. It's like slowing you down from being able to just like climb in the air when you're do doing, you know, long jump or um, high jump and so forth. So I want to make sure of that. February 18th is the first meet we're doing at Spires. So that's good that that's in Ohio. So February 18th at Spires. Um, so just mark a calendar for that. Um, okay. And I'll update that also. I've got a 
have my assistant updated on the actual um, AMP up site as well. Um, okay, let's see what else he wants me to go over with you guys. Wanted to congratulate Kim. She's had her one year anniversary. Uh, so Kim is at her one year anniversary um, downtown, which is wonderful. So her downtown location has hit one year um, this week or whatever. This week is her one year anniversary. So I um, want to congratulate her on that with her business. Um, she's also going to be opening up a Lewis Center location, um, probably the first quarter of this year. So she'll have her second location. Um, then Rhonda um, said that there's a thing called a pop-up shop that we can do at Chase in some big wide open area at Chase. So put a little um, amp up pop-up shop in there. So that could be um, something that we want to work on, work on in the springtime as well. Um, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, another big deal in the news, um, we have been selling um, our bars and shakes and detoxes out of um, several small, small town and small um, nutrition stores and coffee shops, um, military stores, all those kind of places. And we are just getting wiped out at all the subzillas. So um, the bars are going crazy. They just, as soon as I deliver, gone. I got to come twice a week. Um, so these things are just flying off the shelf. So that's pretty cool. Um, making Jody just busy as a bee, um, making all this, doing all this baking and so forth. So we want to keep expanding that as well. Um, uh, so um, just there's going to be a lot of growth this year. So a lot of growth. Main place that we want to grow. Can you shut that? I don't have to hear that. Um, main place we want to grow is in the small towns, um, in the small town locations of um, little nutrition stores. There we go. Um, small nutrition stores, um, no franchises because they have got they have too many rules and too much control. We're about to go into a, a really nice, gorgeous gym in Zanesville, Ohio, called uh, Southtown Gym. Um, a client of ours. There was a client for 20 years, Monica Freer. She's a trainer there now. Um, so they want to have the entire thing there. So going to finish working on that this week. Um, so, you know, anybody that you want us to talk to that you um, uh, know or whatever, all you got to do is say, hey, I'm going to get their information and then we can go out on a meeting with you or whatever, meet with them and see what they need. And then I'll work that out. And again, you would be the refer rep. So you will get your commission, which we just were working down the commission structures now. Um, if it's a retail reseller versus just a corporate account versus just a customer. So three different um, levels on that. Um, okay. So those are the main things. Now he wanted me, and I said the thing about Kim, unless you want to say some more stuff about Kim. I said that's her one year anniversary this yeah. week. Yeah. So congratulating her on that. Yep. Yeah. And then she... Um she's getting her second location going up and going. She's still working through the plumbing and the permit issues, but she's there doing it as like a pop-up shop. So yeah, she's opened her second location before even her first year anniversary that's in business. Wonderful. So that's awesome. That's wonderful. That's so awesome. Um, and then before you got in here, Rhonda's working on uh, Chase Bank where we can have a pop-up shop in Chase Bank. Okay. Um, so I just have to do some of the preliminary stuff that you have to do. And then, you can put a pop-up shop in there or whatever. Um, and that's just all their staff, all their employees. So um, are we going to talk about the powerlifting meet options? Okay. Bring that up. Yeah. Bring that up. Go ahead and discuss it. Oh, me? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nobody else is in here. Okay. So <laughs> I've had this conversation with several of my clients today. And Chris okay. was in charge of reminding me if I forgot. Um, but I had several people asking that, um, mostly the ones that are not involved in track because they're focusing on, okay, first of the year, what's my next goal? And, you know, just wanting to put the power lift to meet on their calendar. So we were looking. Oh, Scott. Oh, you can't, you can't X this out. Okay. Okay. We're looking that. at doing the one that's the first weekend in May. And it is down in Nashville, Tennessee. So, A, apparently Sarah can't get it together to host a meet here in the central Ohio area for the spring. 
that's fine. We don't really want to support it anyway. Is that what we heard from Rachel? Is that what Rachel told us? That's what somebody. Yeah. I, I overheard Rachel. something. Yeah, okay. I think it was Rachel. Was I was overhearing something. something. Yeah. Um, either way, it's not on the calendar. And the fact Correct. That they said they, they couldn't um they couldn't secure the dates yet. So she's still trying to do okay. something. So I don't know if there's an issue with like the gym or whatever, but I asked Rich and he said that they're still having some scheduling. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. So I thought somebody messaged them to, you know, get some solid communication, but either way we need to put it on the schedule because we have a lot of people with other commitments um, and everybody kind of needs to get on their training programs. And then we also have, you know, track meets, we have indoor season ending, we have summer season that we're going to start up with. So I think it's a great idea to take advantage of this and just commit to the Nashville meet. And then if, if something pops up, um, that's in Springfield, then we already have the reason why we can't go. So we love the energy at Springfield. <laughs> um, we love how big that meet is, yeah, but I really like that we can make this statement in a non bitchy way and also just not take part in Sarah's meet this spring. So, yeah. So maybe Sarah is no longer going to be the chair for it anymore. That would be even more wonderful. That would be wonderful be if wonderful. she can't pull this together. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. Anyway. Um, um, but Nashville in the spring, that's always just such a great time because it's always a little bit warmer down there. You can go down there, yeah. you know, wear some shorts, short sleeves, yeah. shorts, skirts, whatever. And then you come back here to some blustery bipolar weather for the rest of May. <laughs> so this May How far of a drive is Nashville? Uh, it only took us, um, like, like it's five, Columbia, Tennessee, five and, a half. five, five and a half hours. It's never a bad drive. Yeah. And it's a really nice drive and it's really beautiful. Once you get to Tennessee, yeah. it's so beautiful. And going there. down there like Friday evening, like we all, we all leave like yeah. Friday kind of late afternoon yeah. and then we get there in time for weigh-ins and then everybody goes out to dinner separately, but everybody goes out to dinner. So it's just really good timing. Columbia, Tennessee is beautiful. Yeah. Um, the venue is always beautiful and easy to get to. Yeah. And then we love getting up and like exploring the more rich areas yeah. um, and meeting up with clients that we have down there, different celebrity clients that have moved down there for the industry. Um, and then just like going to brunch on Sunday or whatever events they have going on. So I just like that whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so that's May 4th, Columbia, Tennessee, NASA. So we're, we're pretty much done with USA powerlifting for a minute. Um, uh, it's just more fun to actually go for those records. And I love to be able to manipulate the math for the records. It just wasn't as fun with USA um, powerlifting. As and it just is. the team spirit aspect of it. Yeah. Like we love said from the, the beginning, I love the what, family what we feel. value and what we really want to promote is yeah. like that team spirit, like yeah. that culture of being on a team and cheering yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we kind of brought it to USAPL, but at the same time, like that's not really what their culture is. Yeah, that's so true. And I don't like all that rule following. I feel like I we're do not like all that rule following. I feel like we are celebrated more within the NASA organization. Yeah, right. And it's, uh, you know, yeah, you're probably. here to be celebrated, not tolerated. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, you have some other stuff to say? No, I just can't figure out how to un how to mute myself again. <laughs> 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 the button disappeared. <laughs> the tech wizard. The tech wizard. <laughs> Any chance when it, I'm on my phone? Can you? Oh, can you're you on your phone. Your side? Oh, problem. Oh, mute. Should I mute her? No. Okay, let me see. Oh, I can mute you. Okay, bye, I got you. I got you done. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Close your dog in bar. <laughs> okay, Mike asked a question. If we are running low on fat intake with this keto plan, can you recommend a convenient way to quickly intake fat? To meet the daily requirements. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do um, is if you use the app and you key in your meal. So let's say your meal, Mike, is two burgers, um, two pieces of bacon, um, an ounce of Swiss cheese, um, um, a half a cup of asparagus. You key all that in. And you see just for that meal alone, because it'll show you on the diagram, um, it'll show you by the meal or by the day or whatever, it will show you, um, which I'm going to grab it on my phone real quick, how that meal looks. So let's go back. So it'll show you like that meal is a um, 
high protein meal or too many carbs in the meal. Let's see if I can get it to show up here. Um, can I go back? Show me the damn day. Melinda, this is Karen. Hey, I'm having the same thing that Michael is. That it's, I mean, I'm, it's not too hard to keep the um, protein up and the carbs, so honestly, but it's the fat part of it. Yeah. So uh, you want to make sure, like, let's say that you keyed in, but you, like I said, two burgers, the bacon, and um, uh, some cheese, okay? So right when you look at that meal, okay, so I've got one. Uh, so if this meal says um, uh, Meyer pork rinds, no carbs, 320 calories, two ounces, rotisserie chicken, no skin, 160, one carb. Breakfast total is 480 calories, one gram of carb. Um, if I go up and I look, when I look at that day, I look at my, I look at that meal and it says five net carbs. Um, it'll tell me what my fat grams are and my protein grams as well. And so when I look at that whole thing, I go, okay, this meal itself does not have enough fat in it. You immediately get some olive oil get some guacamole, get some coconut oil, get some butter, real butter, or we use melch, which is a vegan butter that has no soy in it. Um, get some goat cheese, put it on the burger, put the, put the olive oil and spices on the, in your vegetable, put the two or three tablespoons and then boom, it goes up with more fat. So you don't have to worry about super fatty foods. Just add the coconut oil, the olive oil, or some guacamole to it. And like I said a little earlier, just be careful of cheeses that have too much carbs because they have too much lactose in them. The Swiss cheese has no carb. The goat cheese has no carb. Sharp cheddar has no carb. So try to stick with those cheeses that are predominantly fat cheese and not a um, higher carb cheese. If you are going to eat one of those cheeses, just make those ounces smaller. Because lactose is sugar. Lactose dairy is sugar. Yeah, that's sugar. what I told them. Yep. So that dairy sugar makes those carbs go, carbs go up too high. So whatever you plan on eating, go ahead and key it in and then just look at it. And then it'll give you the little, um, whether the meal does. Let's see if I can get the light away from there. Whether it's the meal, um, just one meal will immediately show me. And it goes, okay, you've got... 72 fat, you got 131 left, you got 87 protein, 105 left, you got eight carbs, 21 carbs left, or 13 carbs left, sorry, 13 carbs left out of 21 that I can have. It's showing me if the meal itself is a higher fat meal. So by the end of the day, that yellow, which represents fat, I need to be almost all that done. So that's critical. You never want your protein beating that fat circle. So do not let the protein beat your fat circle. Um, at the end of the day, sometimes I have no um, protein left. So all I can do is cheese. Um, I can do olives. I can do cheese. Um, if I did a little bit of walnuts or, or pork rinds. So those are the only things I can find that are solid fat. Sometimes your fat is used up and you need a little bit of protein. Then that's a piece of fish because there's usually no fat in fish. So this is what you'll learn. Chicken, no, chicken has fat. White meat. White meat. It has fat. You know, when you're and out whites. of so, um, but always remember, if you end the day not getting all your protein in, not getting all your net carbs in, that's always a better day than not getting your fat in. Does that make sense now? Okay. What percentage? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Melinda. Yeah, I'm, I'm close to my protein goal using okay. the app, but very deficient on fat. So I was just looking for... You know, after I've eaten that meal, is there something I can quickly supplement nuts, MCT oil, and you suggested a few. So that's that's very helpful. Yeah. And it could go right in the meal you're eating. So you could just add it, add the butter, like my steak. I had a mm. wonderful steak. There's pre-steaks at Myers, filet steaks. They're fantastic. Um, they have no fat on them. They taste really good. And I just made my own butter with garlic, fresh garlic, and put that all over my steak. So I could get two tablespoons, two or three tablespoons of butter right there on the steak. So think about adding your oils, your uh, butters, and your like goat cheese or cheese um, on your meat and veggies. And really, you've got to record them in here because they really matter. They count a lot. Um, and just use that always when you're eating. And like I said, uh, pork rind, 
a little bit of walnut and a certain cheese that has no lactose. Those three are like the, and an olive, those four are like fat that don't have anything but fat in them. Um, what percentage under each of those three categories is acceptable for us to stop with at the end of the day? Well, I don't know what you mean by that, but 70% has to be fat and there's no two ways about it. So what are you trying to ask about that? 70% fat is, you've got to get to 70% fat for your day. I know, I know you said that with that, but like it, the carbs, you said it's okay to go under with the, not okay. You got to get, you want us to get as close as we can. But yeah. if, oh, if it's like, you know, five percent, like if we're supposed to have, um, you know, 10% of something, I, I'm just throwing out numbers and we only had six. Is that acceptable? Is that okay? Or is it like, we're not worried about the protein and the carbs. We're not worried about the protein and the carbs. We don't want those to ever beat the fat. So the number one goal is, is don't let protein and carbs ever beat your fat, especially protein. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So always leave the day where fat has just, yeah, just smashed the other two. I mean, 70, 70% 70 fat, 25% protein, 5% carb. That's a pretty big smash right there. So that's the kind of the zone you want to be in. We're not looking for 40, 30, 30. That is not fat burn. 40, 30, 30 is not going to burn fat unless you're on gear. Um, okay, any other questions? So we are like really crystal clear here about this. Yeah, I don't know what app you're using. The app Sorry, is... The app is called Carb Manager, okay, Perfect. Carb Manager, and then if you just go in the app store, key in Carb Manager, use the free one. I paid for the $29 a year one. I'm like, it helped me for a year because I was just taking the recipes and using them when I was giving you guys recipes all the time. You, the free one works perfectly fine. You do not need to pay for anything. Just use the free cool. one. Thank works you. Perfectly um, and it's so cool because any food that you eat, if there's a barcode, scan it, automatically pulls it right into your app. And then food that you are eating all the time, you're going to be able to see it. You just, you just scroll, you, you swipe over and just hit the plus sign, add it right back in for the meal. And then all you have to do is just change it like, oh, I had, I had 20 olives today, not 10 at that meal. Or I had two ounces of cheese, not one. Just make those little edits. So whenever you're eating out or planning to eat out, try to know the, the, the menu ahead of time and then. Think about what you're going to eat there, key it in ahead and see how it's going to show up. And then when you get there, so like, I'll give you an example, like North Star. So I ate at North Star and then I said, North Star is very expensive. Obviously, you guys know that. It's normally like 20 bucks for the hamburger with everything that they serve with it, 17 to 20 bucks for a salad. So I said, I just want the hamburger patty and I just want the lettuce and the onion pickles with it. Um, and she goes, oh, we can just charge you for the patty. I said, okay. Then I said, then I want the um, the um, turkey, the salad that has the turkey on it. Um, and don't bring the bread with it. Uh, I said, it's keto. And any restaurant you go to, if you tell them, I'm on keto, take that bread away or whatever. They take it away. They understand keto. Every single waiter, every single place knows, don't fucking put bread at that table. That's a keto table or whatever. Um, so it really works good. And everywhere you eat out, they can usually rearrange everything. I'll say, no, I can't have squash. I can't have corn. Can you give me asparagus? Yes, we've got asparagus. We'll make that for you. Or can you give me extra mushrooms? Put some onions with my mushrooms. They'll do all of that. Um, so they'll do all that for you. Um, but once you actually become fat adapted and you really are not, um, exceeding, um, um, turning the light switch back on for carbs, you will, like I said to Jody today, you're going to feel different. It feels weird. It feels kind of weird, but it goes, the weirdness goes away. It starts to be your new normal. Like you're kind of dizzy a little bit when you stand up fast, just because your body's still not used to not getting carbs. And then that goes away. Um, then you're going to start to be like hot as shit at night burning so much fat, you'll, like I said, you'll eat some hard boiled eggs with some pork rinds and start sweating <laughs> right after because you're burning body fat. You eat other shit, you don't sweat at all. So there's some weird adaptations that happen, but then they all calm down and you just know like, man, I'm fat adapted now. Everything I'm eating is burned. It's getting burnt. It's getting burnt. And then you start to feel that you're breaking the addiction to carbs. It's causing all the problems in your life um, and they cause nothing but problems. Um, and then you start to feel a, a sense of control that you don't have to worry that your goddamn weight is going to keep going back and forth. Um, and because you finally understand it's either carb adapted or fat adapted. And if you turn that switch back on over on carbs, you're in trouble. 
you're going to go right back down that um, pathway. Now, everybody's different. Some people have a lot more muscle genetically. They're taller, they're bigger, they got more muscle. Um, they're not really in big eaters. They don't like sweets. When they do eat a little bit of carbs, it's just a little bit. They're most likely fat adapted already because their habits, they're not a big sweet eater. They don't eat a ton of carbs. They can moderate their stuff. They're probably fat adapted. What I did my, my whole life wrongly is look at people like that and think, oh, I can eat a little bit like that. No, I fucking can't. I can't eat a little bit of carbs at all. So I'm not fat adapted. I literally go crazy when carbs come in my body. I remember um, the story about Jack LaLanne. If any of you know Jack LaLanne or ever listened to a story or read his book, he has a great uh, video on YouTube. If you go back to his original, like, why did Jack LaLanne get off of sugar? And it said because he almost killed his brother. He said his face was broken out so disgusting all over his back and his face. He was getting teased all the time. He was wanting to kill people constantly. He almost killed his brother. They were wrestling and he lost his shit on his brother. And his parents said, oh, we're going to have to put you in a mental institution. Um, and then finally he met somebody that understood the diet and said, you cannot handle sugar at all. From this moment forward, you are not to touch a speck of it. He said every ounce of his acne went away within 90 days. He was his normal competitive self with no more anger issues. And he never touched it again, ever. Um, so that was Jack Lane's entire story. So um, he said, I was a junkie, like a crackhead on sugar. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happens in my bloodstream. So, um, and I've never been fat adapted in my whole life. So I really don't know what it's like. So this is the journey now. So anyway, um, some of you might Try to go down the pity track with me. I just want to kind of let you know ahead of time that's not going to work in case you were wondering. Um, so don't play that card with me because I will play a beat down card with you. If you try that pity card with me on sugar and carbs, that's just your addiction talking. Um, so um, and don't look at other people. So-and-so can do this. So-and-so can do this. I just got done telling you that story. I looked at people my whole life. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Uh their, their bloodstream, their blood sugar is nothing like mine. So they don't eat a bunch of carbs. They don't eat a bunch. They don't crave sweets, whatever. Whatever it is that's going on in their bloodstream, I don't have it. So don't play the pity card with me on this. Um, it really does work. It works really, really good. Um, it does feel shitty four to, four to six days. But once the shitty feeling's over, you start to get a sense of control you never knew. And um, it it feels good when you're at the restaurant. You're like, no, no, we're keto. The waiters get um ashamed <laughs> they get ashamed of eating bad um so it actually works great so and there's something about the word keto so many people understand it now that no one's really afraid of it um and they know better and a lot of times they are told that someone's on keto because they've got a diabetic problem so i think that's why it gets you a lot of respect when you say it so definitely use it to your advantage Brittany, you got anything else to say so we talked about that um Talked about powerlifting, those of you that want to do it. Uh, one more thing I want to add about powerlifting. Exactly like I started out um, about um, once you've got really good muscle memory, like we were just talking about track, how long we had not run, how long we had not sprinted. It didn't even compute how long it had been since I've done the 60 and I ran my fastest time ever. And I'm like, why did that not even compute? It didn't compute that I hadn't done my high jump. Oh, I knew a couple how long it been since I ran. But you did your best time ever. I know. And so what the the, 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 the lesson was, was you don't have to get so that. obsessive yeah. on practicing so much. You've already built a base of all these muscles and all these this muscle memory and all this form um, that just like powerlifting, we don't maybe four weeks out, we can just look at your lifts four weeks out and then just do. Yeah. Uh, I don't want you to think that it has to be this big, huge, gargantuan amount of weight anymore. If you're just like, yeah, I want to do the meat. I want to make sure I'm still strong. I still keep keep all my juice, but it's, it's not like you have to compete from the last time you competed in powerlifting. It's just a means to an end with everything you do just to hold on to all your good muscle and all that kind of stuff. And I will say as a master's athlete, and I'm speaking out both, both teams here. Um, I've always been in a very consistent habit of powerlifting. And so I understand that schedule. I understand my recovery. And what I said from the beginning is I don't understand and I don't have any experience with what the training schedule is of a master's track athlete and what my expectations should be. Then the more I was meeting people at meets and talking to them, um, especially all those guys that, you know, we, you guys have all met pretty much at the track meets at this point. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are also track coaches. 
And so they have a lot of background in this. And I've, you know, just been chatting with them at the meets and then, you know, we're Instagram friends and they're like, Hey, I saw your practice. Da, da, da. So anyway, you know, from each of them, basically they don't train multiple times a week. Yeah. So some of them, like, remember the hot bearded dude? Yeah. He, he Wait, was like, are you talking about Dean and the, 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 no, remember the hot bearded dude that Todd was like, who's that guy? And then I was like, oh, he's a former NFL player. Hot bearded oh, dude with the oh, yeah 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 yeah, 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 okay. yeah yeah. So he was like, "No, I only trained for like two weeks before coming to that nationals meet." He's wow. like, "I actually," he's like, I, "I barely ever run or sprint," and wow. he's like, "I actually barely even lift weights anymore." He's like, "The majority of what I do because he has fibromyalgia." He's like, "The majority of what I do is stretching." He's like, "I'll, I'll go to the gym and stretch for two hours a day Lovely. and do of all of that anti-inflammatory Lovely. stuff." Lovely. But he was a college track athlete, so he has all that muscle memory. Yeah. So now understanding more just about masters athletics in general i can say when i was going to the track three times a week my first year that was too much yeah. for a master's athlete yeah and so you know there's so many things that we say where we're like we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about age we're not gonna use age as an excuse but like i was discussing with todd today there's also certain realities that we have to just accept and live out and attend to and so this is one of those things where to me i was so happy not only to get that time at the track and like be right there in like national championship contention but also you know all these girls that i looked up to and looked at over these years and, and looked at their training and watched them and tried to learn what they do i'm right there and i'm i'm right there at their level like the way that i've figured out and learned and been taught and kind of like coagulated how my training needs to be like it's been a whole group effort from a lot of people to figure this out and so don't think because I was chatting with Rachel afterwards like don't think because you're getting stuck on something or you you, you know you can't do something right that there's something wrong with you or you're not good at this right because I literally started crying after our last meet and I was like Todd I just feel like I'm getting worse every single practice and my times are going down, like they're going up, not down. They're getting worse, not better. And my body hurts and I'm not getting better at this. And it hurts worse and worse. And I was like, I don't know what I need to do, but I need to figure this out because I want to enjoy this. And I don't want to do this as a have to anymore because I've lived my entire life doing have tos. I want things that I enjoy in my life. Oh, yeah. And if I'm not enjoying this for this period, I'm not saying I'm never doing this again. I'm saying I'm not doing this, not enjoying this. Yeah. And this is wrong on a much bigger level. And so that's what we had another conversation about today. And so I was so happy when I got that that time at the track on uh, Sunday, just for the fact that I got the fucking time, but also for the fact that, like, that goes to show, I haven't been, he took me one time for a time trial in, like, December before it got shitty weather, um, and then I was even better now. Yeah. Um, That's so what we're trying to say. It just goes about to show. All this, you're going to be so shocked. All of the training that we're teaching you to do in the gym. Yeah. Now, I've been consistent as fuck in the gym. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing the stair stepper for glutes. And I've been doing all the things that I, I knew that I figured out to do. And that I'm being taught to do. And that I'm learning how to do with all my own study. I'm doing everything in the gym. I'm there five fucking days a week. So, you know, but one or two hours world, They time. don't need to be anywhere five days a week. That's what? the whole, the whole, the whole story here is that they don't have to be doing yeah. all this. I go there and there to socialize yeah. um, and my workout, but I mean, some of them are in here a couple days a week. Yeah. So, but I'm saying I was at the track three days a week for two to three hours at a time. Yeah. And that was painful. Yeah. Um, so on top of everything else. So that's exactly. exactly what he said. He said, it's not necessary. Now everybody's so well-trained and they've got great muscle memory um that you know once a week you get something in and just get little stuff in it. and i've seen her do that at the gym too yeah. she'll just do just her hips one time just a few little hip oh, things yeah. that I help with sprint a lot. i'll just do takeoffs 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 10 takeoffs also i used and to i go the, off the first so. 30 minutes i have to talk to everybody who wants to buy protein bars so yeah. now my gym time is longer because i have to fucking talk to people i can't just be antisocial like i used to yeah. Um, one more thing. And I'm also I wanted stretching to say. for like 45 minutes a couple times a week. Yeah. So that's critical. don't think it's, and you could do that while you watch TV. Sure could. Sure could. Exactly. Um, what was I going to say on here about that? What you were just saying about that at the gym? Mm. Can I ask you really? This might be too deep of a question for this. No. For tonight. Nothing. Never. <laughs> but um, diet wise, the one thing that, just as you get older, I always think of colon health. I know that sounds exciting, but 
you've always been taught, you know, to have grains in your diet, oats, things like that. And I would say I've cut a lot of that out. And how, where does that come into play with keto? I'll, I'll let you know. Well, first of all, the grains come into play because the grain and the sugar industry yeah, controls the food pyramid. She was saying so grains. First, the no, food pyramid. No, grain, like, grains. like oats, G-R-A-I-N. Oh, grains. Okay. grains, yeah. Thank so the you. food pyramid is controlled by the sugar and the grain industry. They dominate that food pyramid. So that's propaganda. That's number one. Um, fiber, the only amount of fiber um, that's really necessary is what's in vegetables. That's more than enough fiber. Um People that have good, strong guts and they don't have IBS, they don't have lactose allergies. Uh, is this Miranda talking? I can't tell. No, Karen. Oh, is that Karen talking? Yeah, it was Karen. And it, okay. and I probably should say that. Oh, I should say you don't more, have you don't really more, have digestive issues, correct? Am I correct about that? That's correct. And I'm thinking probably okay. more. I should correct that more fiber because as you yeah. get older so, and you have your procedures. Well, that's that, all propaganda too. That's all propaganda. Most well, people as they get older, they, um, okay. So let's talk about most people as they get older of which you are not in the category at all. So let's just gossip about other people. This doesn't pertain to you. Most people as they age, they've never fasted a day in their life. They consume massive amounts of alcohol and drugs and they worry nonstop. Mm -hmm. And the food they eat is so low quality. It's grain fed animals. It's grain fed chicken. It's every, every meat they eat is a low quality grain fed or farm raised, which farm raised in China and shipped over here is just disease laden fish. So they don't eat healthy food. And then they eat fast food on top of that, which has sawdust in it. So when you talk about when people eat grains in their diet, we're talking about people that eat absolute utter white trash shit for food they eat worse than a wild animal would you agree their colon it's is just it's true and that and that is true i guess what you know that nutrition book that you gave me and my um uh Nancy PCP. Clark's Clark's nutrition? yeah Nancy yep. Clark's nutrition what are and the best de ever? it definitely says that it, it needs you and, and i know so that's my yeah, I know that's how and you my, live. And my family doctor says the same, like fiber. You need fiber for, because you don't want things to stay in your gut, in your intestine more, I'm thinking, because then that's what causes polyps, cancer, the whole thing. So that's where I'm trying to figure. But like, I think you answered my question, though, really? is, shit? The shit is vegetables. I mean, vegetables yeah. higher in fiber. That's where yeah. I'm trying to get some of that and higher fiber. Veggies. Yeah. yeah, green veggies, whether you make a smoothie with them or you actually cook them and eat them, um, green vegetables <clears throat> will sweep out the colon yeah. immediately. And understand right. about cancer. So you're coming against me, who's against the medical establishment entirely. Cancer is completely emotionally caused. Um, and it is not wanting to live, not wanting to be on the planet anymore and want to actually rid the self from the planet. It is self-loathing of some level. It's festering on some level. So if you heal that emotion, then that goes away. But when it comes to the colon, which is the seat of all emotions, that's the name of it. So the colon is seat of all emotions. If emotions are out of control in that being, there's going to be problems, no matter what you eat. And sugar causes inflammation. So sugar is the worst of all. Foods, that's the majority of people's diet. That's yep. the shit that gets built up in the colon. Yeah. And when I have ulcerative colitis, which was an emotional problem. Um, and then aggravated by lactose when I didn't know I'd have a dairy allergy and kept consuming it, then it became two feet of bleeding ulcers. When I had to go through that and the whole process to heal it naturally because I refused drugs, that's where I learned all about the body. It, it would have turned to cancer if I would have stayed around abusive people and not dealt with my emotions, that the seat of emotion. So don't More take the messages. track. Okay. Don't go down the track of thinking that your body is, isn't already perfect. It's a hundred percent perfect. It works perfectly fine on a very natural diet. Nothing man-made in a box, a grain that's man-made, all that's man-made shit. We don't need anything man-made. Um, and vegetables are perfect on the amount of fiber that's needed. Um, and keeping your colon really clean. There's no greater thing than fasting on keeping your colon clean and very healthy. Um, peristalsis, uh, gets triggered 
um, also with fasting. Um, there's just so much, so much goodness with fasting. It's incredible. Uh, you can watch video after video after video on dry fasting and water fasting and juice fasting, which you've done them all. You've done almost all of them with us. So, and it's the greatest anti-aging that there is, is that as well. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see. Todd has a few of us on pre-pro and post-probiotic chemo messed my gut up. And this is a huge help. Absolutely. Rachel said that. Um, Karen, um, there is a supplement that's fantastic. It's uh, all in one and it's a pre prebiotic, probiotic and postbiotic all in one capsule, one a day. Um, and it really, it was great. I started, I did that for the first two weeks that I did keto. It's fantastic. Um, but you want to be careful always doing those again, you don't want to be on prebiotics or any of those things constantly. I learned that from Michelle because it's too much. You don't need that much. The body already makes its good, its gut biome and it can use what you're eating when you're eating healthy. It doesn't need supplements all the time. Um, and you don't want to add too much of those pre post and um, uh, probiotics because they turn into like a little nuclear explosion in your gut over and over and over. It's needed if something bad was eaten or if you're changing your diet around just to intro yourself into the next way of eating. Um, so don't get in the habit of constantly buying um, prebiotics and, and drinking stuff with prebiotic. Careful on that. It's just too much. We don't need that much. The Our hormones and our gut are very sensitive. Once they get a nice little balance in there, you're not craving stuff. You digest well. You go to the bathroom easy. You don't have to wipe a lot. It doesn't have a foul odor. You know you've really cleaned your gut and made your gut a really good place. Um, so that's like the signals you need to know. All the, the specialists I went to for colonics and stuff, that's exactly how they would talk to me. You don't want little balls, little hard balls are called nerve pellets. It means you're too nervous. You're too high strung. You need to calm your shit down. Literally, got to calm your shit down so your shit calms down when you shit. And it just like comes out easy. Um, so um, fiber, vegetables, more than enough. Um, be careful of all the propaganda that's out there, all the companies that control the food pyramid, control doctors, control big pharma, fucking all being controlled. Um, last thing Todd wanted to say is about winning, um, winning. So every time we lose, every time we go long periods of time without winning, though, that's considered losing to, to ourselves. Okay. So whenever you don't have a lot of wins under your belt, those are people that you can't correct easily. They get aggressive with you. They get, they can't be critiqued. They um, get defensive. You can't even get your sentence out and they're already defending a five, five things and you're not even finished talking. That's someone that you're talking to that doesn't have enough wins under their belt, whether it's recent or, or forever. Um, if it's of recent, they're going to be defensive. They're going to say, all you do is pick on me. All you do is tell me everything I do is wrong. All you do, all you do, all you do, all you do. You're going to hear every single victim statement there is to make. Winning goes into the cells and... It puts your brain, your emotional brain, your logical brain, and your reptile brain in a calmer place, in a peaceful place, in an accepting place, and in a more humble place because it's pride. So when people don't win, they become arrogant, and arrogance is just pride. So winning makes you more humble because you see how hard you've worked. You see how hard others are working that are beating you. And then you start to get respectful, self-respect, and then respecting other people. So that's why winning is so important and it should never end the rest of your life, all the way to your, your deathbed. So excess weight makes you feel old. Lack of winning makes you feel old. Just spending the rest of your days out. I, don't, I can't remember. Somebody was just here. Rhonda or Chris, somebody was just here. Might have been Chris and she was talking to a coworker and the coworker said, yeah, I don't know if I can do what you're doing like in retirement. Like, you know, that just seems like a lot of work. I, I, I just don't want to do that. And then Chris said something like, well, what do you want to do? She's like, nothing, just what I'm doing now. And she's like, that's awful. Well, why not die tomorrow then? That's horrible. And the woman doesn't even like her life. She does nothing. She just loses. So just dying in the herd, a loser acting old when you're 29, not competing in anything. That is the traditional herd aging process. They start talking like that at 29. You all are anomalies. So are we. We are choosing to jump and sprint and throw and run 
and do everything aggressive. Fasting, um, even the keto, you're fasting off of sugar. It's still fasting, okay? You're fasting off of grains. You're fasting off of sugar. Fasting is so good for you. That's why the body gives you longer lifespan. Um, so it's, you're an anomaly. This is a very... This is a very rare way of life to be anti-aging. And there's so few people that do it and so few people that believe in it and so few people that care about it. And that's usually the herd and the way the herd all dies the same exact death. They all look the same when they're dying. They all look the exact, they, everything about them matches. And you need to be very careful about the herd. There's so many of them. They will make you feel they're right and we're wrong. That's the road of the wide leads to death. A road that's narrow leads to life. It's a longer life span when you do anti-aging behavior. It's a shorter lifespan when you do what the herd does. Everything they do. I mean, it's so disgusting to listen to some of the stuff they eat and do. And I'm just like, and they think they're being good. I'm like, wow, it's just fucking crazy. And then next, next conversation I have with them, they got knee cancer. They got... Just they got a, a tapeworm that's 18 feet long. They got acne at age 61. What are you breaking out at 61 for? It's just problem after problem. So, and it's from not winning. The cells of the body need to win. All the cells, every single cell of the body, eyeball cells, fingernail cells, everything has to win. If it doesn't, it just begins a process of eradication. Cancer is a beautiful thing. Cancer eradicates something that does that shouldn't be here anymore that doesn't want to exist, that doesn't want to be here, whatever. That's what cancer is for. It's to munch down the organism, get it on, move it on. So I don't look at cancer as some scary thing. We can, Any of us could get it. No, we cannot. No, we cannot. No, we cannot. It's always, it will always be at the root of severe self-loathing and abuse, um, especially abuse. So, um, and any kind of uh, trauma that we go through is abuse. So it can be there, but if you're not the cause of the abuse and somebody else is and you wake up to it, you can heal it and get it out of you and never have to worry about that shit coming back again, unless you put yourself back in that scenario again. If you stay around people that are healthy and they do not abuse you and they do not create trauma, our brain, our body is not built for trauma. And when we go through trauma, there's going to be hell to pay. It's going to be hell to pay. Um, so all of us, all of every one of us abused kids have had massive hell to pay from the trauma that we went through, every single last one of us. Um, so I'm not cutting on anyone that's had anything at all. Um, I just understand it's emotional. And as long as we heal it and we're around safety and we stay near safety and we don't let anything dark in, none of this herd bullshit, these losers in your world, then you can stay healthy and feel confident about remaining healthy. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, Jody just sent me these. Don't try to compete with Jody on her baking skills. It's just too beautiful here. She made keto cheese crackers. Look how beautiful that picture is. How she made those perfect squares, do not ask me. I have no clue. You must consult directly with her. But those are gorgeous. Keto I will cheese tell crackers. you. It's very simple. Even you can make them, Melinda. Whoa. What did you do to make those squares turn out perfect? It's just the, um, I got the Sargento cheese slices and you stack yeah. them all in one big stack and cut it in a four square and then put them on the parchment paper and bake them and that's it. And oh they're really God. good. How long did you bake them for? How long did you bake them for? Um, 25 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, but I should have kept it in about 10 minutes longer because it, it's better when they're more crispy. And then uh, what was your temperature you did with this parchment paper? On 250. The all right. Uh -huh. Everyone, you just heard how she did that beautiful stuff. And they're gorgeous. good. I mean, it, it tastes like cheese, but they're crispy to make you think you have a cheese cracker. Awesome. And I'm going to use it good for you. Dinner. Those look beautiful. Congratulations on something that nice. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, Miranda said raspberries. Good too for that on digestion. Yeah. Raspberries are typically lower, um, but just watch them. Watch your, your um, carbs on that. But yeah, any of the berries, they have some fiber in them. You put a little bit of that in any of your stuff. You shouldn't have to worry whatsoever, especially if you have good digestion and no allergies, no, no digestive allergies. Any, anything else, anybody? Are we good? Okay. All right. Okay.